Hey, what's up team? This is Eddie Gray. Welcome to the channel Resources for the Modern Creative, where we help you become a better producer. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the three reasons why Blanks has become my new favorite sampler. Number one, the workflow. When using Blanks, you're not necessarily actually ingesting any new samples into your project file. Most samplers in the market, if I drag something in, I'm actually just reprocessing and almost kind of re-registering the sample. Well, with blanks, it's basically just referencing and pointing towards the original file path. In other words, you can create your user kits and not necessarily overcrowd your system with new instances of that sample. By way of illustration, let me show you what I mean. If I use Logic's Quick Sampler, and so we'll pull that up. You can see there's no sample loaded. The actual session is right here, and that's mirroring that behavior. There's no samples within my project session. If I take a third party sample here and drag it into Quick Sampler, and now I go back into the original project file, look at what happened. Logic now created a Quick Sampler folder that contains a file that's on my desktop. And so basically it's two samples. Now, what if you're actually doing quite a lot of sampling that can add up over time? Well, with blanks, you don't have to deal with that because it is just essentially pointing towards the original sample. So blanks was essentially created because their user base really wanted an engine where you could drag and drop samples but also have kind of the sonic couture stamp of approval so out of the box it does come with these samples but again it goes way beyond just using these samples the idea is to use your own user kits all right so these are the sounds out of the box all right and so now we're going to create our own kit it really is as simple as dragging and dropping samples. There's really nothing to it. And so what I've done here is I've saved this as a .nki file. Went up here, clicked on save as, and that's one way to do it. You can also save this as a user snapshot. And so here is the new kit now, check it out. All right, so one of the disadvantages with samplers in general is that they are rather lifeless. Like after a while, they're just a little bit stale, right? Well, that's where velocity randomization comes into play. This knob right here looks kind of unassuming, but as soon as I start to lift it up, a lot starts to happen. So right now it just has the machine gun effect. But again, as soon as I start to lift up the velocity randomize function and I start to play with some of the variables here, you can see that it will really bring this up to another level. So I'm gonna have velocity randomize work with the pitch just by clicking and dragging up. I'm also gonna have the actual start time of the sample change over time so that it's not actually you know always hitting exactly on the one sometimes it'll offset by a couple of milliseconds we'll also do the same for the attack on the envelope let's see what this sounds like now okay And you can see that over time, it's starting to, to shift and it's almost creating dynamics. And so I'm gonna click on A1 here. Another way to select these are by hitting the MIDI button here and then just triggering with your keyboard, like so. All right, so I've got A1 in key focus. That's the hi-hat, I believe. Let's check it out. Yeah, so that's not gonna work either. All right, so while this is in focus, I lift up velocity randomize, and then again, I start doing the work of just playing 
with these magical features here. All right, so let's try this out. Let's see what this sounds like. So this relationship between velocity, randomize, and pitch is now literally starting to change the the pitch. It's bending it over time. That sounds really great. Uh, same thing with the start time and same thing with the envelope. We can also play with a little bit of filtering as well. Let's see what that sounds like. So that on top of being able to reverse the sample and also apply like a MPC kind of characteristic on top of that really makes this a formidable sampler in every sense of the phrase. So now I have the workflow really clean, easy to use. I have Velocity randomization that gives my performances a little bit of a competitive edge and dynamics. So here's the beat now. All right, so on C1, I'm simply going to lift up the volume of the kick. And then for some of these percussive effects, down here, I'm just gonna pan left and right. All right, let's see what we got. All right, let's talk about perhaps my favorite feature. It's called drill. In order to access it, you have to hit this tab here brings you into the drill edit page. Now you have the option of triggering this with a MIDI note, or you can just have it on and just have it latch there. And so I'm gonna trigger this just with my hands here. And this is what it sounds like when you turn this thing on, check it out. Now that's a pretty interesting sound. I mean, where else do you get a texture like that? and I haven't really even modified the setting yet. And so when this is turned on, you can play with the speed, and so that sounds like this. So you got a lot of interesting variables there, but remember that these little red numbers work with the last feature I talked about. So if I go back into the edit page, and if I open up velocity randomization, go back into drill, look at what happens here. So you can get some really interesting sounds just out of that alone. But the idea is to use it in tandem with everything else. So let me go ahead and play with Decay. I personally like it around 90%, 80%. And then the warp feature is crazy. Check this out. so that it changes over time. All right, so let me turn down the little red velocity modulation here. So I have just a consistent note. And I really like that sound, especially for transitions. In fact, I used it on one of my latest tracks. You can check it out right now. Let's implement drill within this beat. Here we go. All 
All right, I'm going to quantize just to make sure everything is right where it needs to be. Here we go. Anyhow, team, I hope you enjoyed that video. Go ahead and check out Sonic Couture's blanks. They really did something special here when they created this user-friendly sampler. I don't see anything else that is doing anything quite like it in the market, and I look forward to continuously using this for many, many, many more reasons than I just mentioned in this video. If you did like this video, go ahead and give it a like, go ahead and share it. And of course, if you're digging the channel, again, go ahead and subscribe. I've noticed that most people that are watching are not even subscribing. So go ahead and stay tuned. I got a lot more coming up, lots of plugins, lots of new software that's coming up in the pipeline and just a whole bunch of stuff. So anyway, this is Eddie Gray signing off. Take good care of yourself. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.